Would you ever run a public company again? Well, I would try not to, you know. I didn't like it. <laughs> that sucks. One of the things that happened to me is a hedge fund um, put out a rumor that we uh, had lost a big deal at Citigroup and it was going to cause us to whiff our quarter. Um, and then they put out the rumor and then they called all of our uh, investors, top investors, and asked them had they heard the rumor. Um, and then they got a reporter to write the story. And so all my investors called me and they said, well, did you lose the big deal at Citigroup? Or are you going to whiff the quarter? Well, I'm under Reg FD. So I couldn't say anything. And, and the only thing I could do theoretically was issue a press release, but you can't issue a press release about losing a deal. And there was no deal at Citigroup. It was all false. But the stock dropped 25% on the rumor. So like that was like what it was like for a little company to be public. And when people say, well, why don't little companies go public? Well, that's why. Because like you can get put out of business by, you know, hedge funds who are just manipulating, essentially manipulating the stock. So like that was hard. On the other hand, um, if you look at Opsware as a company, the reason, a huge reason that we were able to kind of be the number one company in the space and not the number two company in the space um, was that we were public. I bought four companies when I was public, which I could never have bought when I was private. Um, and those companies really uh, helped us win the market. So um, there are real advantages to being public, but you've got to, you know, <laughs> I would recommend going to Joe Grenfest and Cy Lawrence Directors College. I would recommend really understanding what you're doing because um, it's not the same. If you came to the Valley in the 90s, and all the action then was down on, on University Avenue and not here, but if you went down there and stopped an executive and said, what's your long-term goal? And they would say, I want to take a company public. I want to ring the bell at yeah. the NASDAQ. And, and I equate it to like getting drafted in the NBA. Like they just, mm -hmm. you know, that was the badge of honor that mean you had made it. And it was, it, it had that kind of idyllic notion at the time. Mm -hmm. And we've come a long way from that. Um, sometime, and I don't know if, you know, the type of people I might point to would be Larry Page, who I don't think really wanted to go public, but then Mark Zuckerberg made it very clear he didn't want to go public. And mm -hmm. you started to get this... Reed Hoffman, too, by yeah, the way. Yeah, you started to get this narrative that the entrepreneur community really jumped on, that it's bad and that you don't want to do it. And um, I've always, you know, first of all, I, I, I think that if you look at some of the best outcomes where people have run the ball the farthest, um, it's just nothing's further from their mind. They're just not thinking about it. And some of the recent people I'd point to is Jeff Bezos, Reed Hastings, Mark Benioff. They just felt it was a part of the step along the way. And in fact, it was just a new constituency they could invite into their lives to use to their advantage it, because they know how to do it better than the company. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, all three of those entrepreneurs to me are just incredible people who have done amazing things. And this notion that you're kind of afraid of it, I always felt was a little weird. And I, I'll use an example that, that some people may find offensive. But if, you know, if, if Andrew Luck was coming out of Stanford, you know, he was the expected first round draft forever. And they were about to do the NFL draft and he held a press conference and said, you know, I just don't think I'm going to sign up for it. He goes, you know, the, 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 they, they track your metrics every game. Like, like every single throw, someone <laughs> writes it down. And they video every single thing. And then they have these shows, 24-hour sports shows, where they just talk about your mechanics and everything. How could I possibly become a better player with that amount of scrutiny? Now, if someone did that, they would be laughed out of the sports stadium. <laughs> um, and, and, and as an alternative, maybe the Reed equivalent or the, or the Benioff equivalent, you look at RG3 and he's like, I'm so ready to show up and play for this Washington Redskins team. I'm going to kill it. I'm going to deliver everything I possibly can. My teammates are going to love that I'm here. Now, if you're a buy side investor that puts money into IPOs, which one of those two guys are you going to back? It's not even a hard question. Right? You, you would back the guy who's showed up and ready to play the game. And so I'd be careful if I were, Phil, you know, running around telling people you, you, you don't like the notion of being out there because there are plenty of 
guys, including people I've worked with like Spencer Raskoff at Zillow or Jeremy Stoppelman mm -hmm. at Yelp, who've just done a remarkable job mm -hmm. uh, in the past two or three years and never once complaining about the game that's on the field. Right. And to a certain extent, look, whether you like it or not, we all, including the journalists, use market cap as the scorecard. Yep. And if that's the game, that's the game. And, and it, being public is kind of the next level up and it allows you to do M&A, it allows you to control the bully pulpit in terms of talking about how the business should be measured or thought about, um, and the great ones are great at that, at mm -hmm. that latter part.